Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cassie Bougie, and I will be starting my team's presentation today for the Innovation and the Aging Competition. My team and I are extremely excited to be here to discuss our product with you all today. Have you or anyone you know struggled with the staining of your lips and teeth while drinking your favorite beverages? Color Stop by Calm is here to help. Physical appearance is something that a lot of people, like Team Calm, truly care about, even if we don't like to admit it sometimes. Drinks like red wine can stain lips, teeth, dentures, you name it, with, which can be really frustrating. Today, we'll describe our product Color Stop and what its capabilities are. First, let's define our problem more clearly. Next slide. Hello, everybody. I'm Megan. The correlation between the care for physical appearance and wine consumption is relevant to the aging process. With these two in mind, Color Stop would have the goal of fixing this problem that arises from the discoloration of your teeth, lips, or dentures from red wine. Women over 50 make up 17.2% of the overall population, allowing for a large part of the market share. In general, aging is associated with unwelcome changes in physical appearance and dissatisfaction of the body, which is clearly shown in a study done by Hoffmeyer et al. Out of 1849 women surveyed, more than 50% of them said to dissatisfaction with their personal physical aging. Not only does this market share provide a large amount of women concerned about their appearance, but there's a, heart, a large correlation with wine consumption. Out of women ages 50 to 59, 12.1% of them drink a half a bottle of wine or that, equivalent two to three times a week. Um, and that is shown in a survey by Science Norway. This is four times higher than women that are ages 30 to 39. With aging comes opportunity for leisure and spending due to the availability of time and money. Both of these aspects can be combined to represent the problem of wine hindering one's appearance. Next slide, please. So there are some current solutions approaches out there for these kind of problems, but um, they may not be as convenient as our product. So right now, whitening strips are out there. However, whitening strips can only be used on natural teeth and they cannot be used on dentures or teeth with caps. So that product won't be necessarily for a lot of, necessary for a lot of people. Another current solution is wine wipes. Um, these do work, but they're sort of inconvenient because you have to wipe your lips every time you use them while you're drinking a colored beverage. Straws are also out there to help with this, but most of the time you won't see wine drinkers using a straw to drink their wine. And then there is a toothbrush that you could use, but most people won't want to brush their teeth in public after drinking wine. Um, and the last solution right now that's out there is just to avoid your favorite beverages, um, which will deprive people um, of what they like to drink. Next slide. I so we are to, what was that? You go ahead, Sorry, Megan. Go. <laughs> okay. I was just gonna say, just to introduce ourselves, um, our team is made up of Cassie, Anna, Lisa, and myself, and we are all getting our master's in management from Green Bay. Perfect, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yep, next slide, please. Um, so to get into more of our product, it is called Color Stop. It's a dual ended color resistant product. So on one side, there is a denture and teeth brush. Um, it's kind of hard to see because it's like light. Um, and then on the other side is the chapstick portion. So this is just a really light coating product that you put on your dentures or teeth and lips before drinking um, wine, coffee, or your favorite colored beverage. Next slide, please. And then, so our customer identification is um, women, specifically in the age of 40 to 80 years old, who have a medium to high income. Um, they are more concerned about their appearance and they have an importance around that. Um, and then we're also gonna be targeting retired women who are like in friend groups, hanging out together, regularly drinking wine. Maybe they're having wine Wednesday nights and they care about um, how they're looking in front of their friends and other people around them. Next slide, please. You have one minute left. So our development plan basically is 
<clears throat> we did the market research on it. Um, next step would be to go to concept development, um, which we have came up with a concept for it. And then prototyping, um, which we showed the prototype of what it would look like. Um, and then the, into design and development, and then into deployment, where we can actually market the, the product. Next slide. Um, so all in all, uh, we just want our target market to be able to enjoy their favorite drinks without having any second thoughts or doubts. Um, and that will be with our denture stain prevention and then the lip stain prevention while also stain, having the lip color stain intact. Next slide, please. Thank um, you all for taking the time to listen to our presentation. Uh, this is where you can find additional information regarding myself and our team members. Are there any questions that you have for us? Yep, so let's turn it over to the judges. We have two minutes for questioning. Um, I have, uh, this is Matt Geimer. I have, I have a comment on a question. Yes, I, I agree that I don't think, I don't see very many people drinking wine out of a straw. So I think you're, uh, I think that's probably accurate. I, I've never seen it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's a thing, but I've never seen that. Um, my question is, um, what would be the, you know, so this is something that you put on your teeth or your lips or your dentures. What would be the texture of that? Is there a taste of that? I know that some, I'm not a wine drinker, but I know like wine, some wine people are very um, particular about what their wine tastes like. And would that affect, would your product, you think, affect that? So like wine wipes, um, those are actually, those were created because of that reason. They don't want their wine to be tasting differently. So our product definitely wouldn't have a flavor to it and it wouldn't affect wine tasting. And it would probably be just more of like a chapstick feel. Hi, this is Brian. Um, great job. The, uh, I never heard of wine wipes before, so that was interesting. Um, so what, what motivated you to pick this particular project and, and maybe wine as the, first, as the first example of how this would work? What's the, what inspired you, I guess, on this idea? One minute left. Oh, okay. So we all discussed common problems we had. And one thing that we talked about is when it comes to appearance, we noticed that when you have your favorite colored beverages, whether it's wine, Gatorade, anything that dyes your lips, sometimes you avoid those products because of your appearance. Because when you're drinking wine in a classy situation, you don't want to have to worry about that. And we thought this would be perfect for this demographic because usually it's elderly women are drinking more wine from our research than Gatorade and other colored beverages. So it could be multi-use, but that would be our main target demographic. Okay, thanks. Hi, Team Calm, this is Liza. Quick question for you regarding any thoughts that you have given to making this product more accessible to other income earners besides medium to high? Um, I think that this product can be definitely marketed to lower income for sure. Um, the reason we were thinking medium to high is because we could market it at vineyards or with specialty wine dealers to kind of make it a package for people that purchase wine. But if we wanted to market it to a lower income, we could obviously make the price lower and then market it for more affordable wine, possibly. Thank you. Okay. Your time is up. Thank you.